it is, Pentax's new mirrorless camera. And the mirrorless market is smouldering hot right now with the likes of Sigma, Olympus, Panasonic, Sony, and even fridge manufacturers Samsung getting a bit of the mirrorless market. Pentax has arguably joined the market when there's already a lot of competition, so they really have to make this quite special for it to survive. Have you read a book called Blue Ocean Strategy? So you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, then basically it's about trying something different when the market is quite clearly saturated. And I think that's what Pentax is doing with this camera, because there's bloody loads of mirrorless cameras. What you've got here it's kind of slightly different. They've gone for extreme downsizing to make it compact camera sized. In fact, the sensor is also compact camera sized. Actually, this is just a fancy compact camera. So this is the 8.5mm prime lens. Or as they call it, standard prime. In those 8.5mm, it works out about 47mm. So this is the standard for this system. Look at this. This bloody little thing is ultra cute. I mean cute in the same way the Tamagotchi is cute. It's kind of toy-like. It looks good, but toy-like. And at 37 grams, it's really quite light. I think some bags of crisps are heavier than that. Oh damn it. What was going on? Unfortunately, it seems a little bit of lag here. Stutters like Gareth Gates. It's actually on, it's on, on raw at the minute. Let's see what the lag is like. Look, okay. They're walking. Okay, well, okay, minibus coming. Oh, <laughs> it's actually writing the raw, so I can't actually take any shots while it's writing, unfortunately. So that's a bit of a disappointment. It's about as disappointing as taking a, a lady home and realising that she's got sexual organs, just the same sexual organs as you. Damn it. I don't really like lag when shooting things around on the street. Image quality is pretty alright for a compact camera. has a bit of colour fringing, but the Pentax optics are pretty good. You kind of want a bit of time to get comfortable with the scene first. You're too busy thinking, okay, plan the shot half a second before I take the shot. That makes sense. But it's alright if they're standing still. Actually, it kind of looks alright if uh, you've got tunnel view, that is. From here, it looks kind of reasonable. But when you look on the sides, it looks like, bloody hell, what have they done with that? It's kind of like a transformer toy. Even the flash is like a, some kind of transformer arm. Look at that. Or R2-D2's uh, poppy uppy lighty. If he's got one. I don't know, not a Star Wars geek. And what is this? It looks like it could be some kind of leg of a robot. Transformer, robots in disguise. Bloody weird looking thing. It must be on acid or something like that when designing this. Oops. There you go, that's Locke's feet. Lovely. It's nice that I put quite a few twiddly dials on the camera. One here, they're changing like the aperture, mode dial, and a customizable dial here. You can customize that front dial to do a few things. As standard, it does the art filters for Arty Farty Malarkey. Of course, they put the play button in the most natural places, which is, guess where? Yeah, it's on top of the camera. There we are. The autofocus speed is so-so, not exactly perfect for the streets. Oh, that's the Chinese Charlie Chaplin. All right, now we're waiting on a vital bit of equipment. My intern's supposed to be bringing it to us. Not on time though. Ah, oh, people these days. So we waited for a bit, waited some more, then there was a car crash, then the sun set, and then finally she came. Ah, oh, people these days. It's cheap, $25, not bad. 
Bloody hell, the sun's coming down now. Not coming down, it's gone. Ah, yeah, yeah. It's time. Ah, there's, ah, there's a rubbish tripod as well. Ah, let's go. Ah, oh, you know, we'll get to learn. Start, start on time. Can make a better cup of tea as well. That's why the guys like you. They're happy. You make them happy. How do you get there? Levitate. You're David Blaine. Oh, he's good, isn't he? Yeah. Now we're just lacking an interesting subject. How do we, how do we get the intern? They always get interns to do stuff like that, I see. Okay. If I could just borrow you, Miss Mr. Intern. Just this way. Like that. <laughs> of course with a small sensor you're probably wondering what the noise performance is like. Let's bump it up. At ISO 3200, it's not too bad and 6400 is alright too. But the thing is, the details are a bit fuzzy, just like Pete Doherty's last 10 years. Borke Gurus will be disappointed because with such a small sensor there's bags of depth of field, but it does have a blur control which is kind of out of control most of the time. As we are quite pleased with the noise performance, we decide to try a trick that we haven't tried before, but somebody else has tried before, so we decide to try it. Well, just swing around. We're actually doing this ball of light, which uh, we saw this other photographer do, which was quite interesting. I wouldn't do it myself, but uh, here we are, yeah, doing it. What? Shoot. Shoot. Okay. Shit. <laughs> Oh, keep going. Oh, what a job. We tried it once, twice, thrice, all equally as bad. But it's good to know that the Pentax had the capability to do this. One, two, three. Okay. Well, you know, the Pentax Q is actually quite fun. Not like throwing a light around. Of course, Ow. it wasn't throwing the blue LEDs around that was boring. It was getting hit in a nutsack Ow. that I couldn't stand. <laughs> oh, man. Let's go home. Let's go. Okay. Alambi tries. Alambi's uh, the ball of light expert. When all else fails, resort to the ambulance for an emergency rescue. As much as some of those Pentax people on those forums might not believe, but I actually want Pentax to do something good. It's actually nice to see that they're trying hard to make a product that's different with the Pentax Q. However, they've joined at a time when the mirrorless market is crowded with plenty of different varieties. True, this is a remarkably small camera, but how small do you really need to go with a camera body? The thing is, with interchangeable lens mirrorless cameras, people want a good blend of performance, a good price, and also a small body. The thing is, I don't think this has enough performance to please the people enough to pay this price. Ow! Oh, I'll turn around it, like that. Wow, that was close. Ow! <laughs> Where'd that go? I told you. Oh, there. <laughs>